What's up guys, this is Nick from Art Shitty Poker, and in today's video, I'm going to be continuing the poker hand review series with today's video covering, as always, one No Limit Hold'em hand, and then one PLO hand. So we'll start with the No Limit Hold'em hand. This is a hand that I played pretty recently from a, it is a live 2-5 game, and we'll just get into the action. So I decided to open in middle position with Ace-4 of Diamonds. I think this is pretty standard. There were more players at this table, but I didn't need to fill them in. It's not necessary. I only have the players that I deem necessary to show this actual hand review. The aggro and solid player behind me who has myself and the other opponent in this hand both covered, he decides just flat. He's a good hand reader. He's aggressive. He can take creative lines. I think that he could make my life somewhat difficult uh, from in position, so... I'm not super happy about this call, but I think we will just have to see a flop and basically go from there. And the player that I have labeled as unbalanced, I wouldn't say he's so much ABC, but he is kind of ABC in a sense that I think that he often caps himself in spots where it's pretty easy to see through his lines and, and he becomes pretty transparent. So. He's pretty unbalanced in, in a lot of spots, and you guys will see in this hand, though, how that uh, ends up not working out for him. We end up seeing the flop three ways, and I flopped very well. Flopped top pair with not a great kicker, but flopped the nut flush draw. The unbalanced player checks to me, and this is a spot where I think a lot of players just auto C-bet. They think, well, I have top pair and the nut flush draw. I'm pushing a lot of EV in this spot, and that's true. However, it is... A spot where I would like to check to this aggro solid player with hands like kings and queens or maybe hands like possibly let's say like uh, 10 9 of diamonds that I might want to sometimes throw into like my check call or check raising range so I, I think that even though it's a board I will be see betting often for my actual hand because I do block diamonds and because I do have a weaker ace x hand it's a little bit tougher to get worse hands to call. I mean, I certainly get hands like pocket pairs to call, maybe 7x, and then obviously if either of my opponents do have a diamond draw, but I think that it's a hand that I do a little bit better with by uh, possibly checking and calling here to balance my range. So not saying that a C-bet is wrong, not saying a check raise is possibly uh, not right either. But for my actual hand and for my range overall to kind of protect my range in the spot against this player, I do like checking to him and letting him fire. And, and it makes it so that I'm tougher to play against in the future. I play off this player a lot, and I would like to protect my range and, and be able to show up with an ace-x hand as uh, played with a check call line. So I do think it's an in interesting spot to talk about this and talk about what you block and what their you know, most likely continues are. The player behind me does go ahead and check. So what we can, I don't want to go to the turn quite yet, what we can basically uh, take away from this so far is that I don't think this player's ever really checking back ace x plus all that often. So even though he can get creative, I think he actually is a little bit capped in the spot. This player could have been going for check raise, so I don't really know quite yet, but I do think he is somewhat capped also in a sense that he is definitely capable of 3-betting hands like ace-king and ace-queen. He would certainly 3-bet aces. So I think that although he can have some strong hands in this board texture, when he just calls out of the big blind, his range is kind of wide. So I feel very good about my hand. I mean, I did to begin with, but after the flop action, I feel even more strongly about it. Jack of clubs on the turn, and my unbalanced opponent goes ahead and leads for $50. Uh, so basically, like, five, six pot, I guess you want to call it. And it's a spot where I think he could certainly have, uh, you know, ace X. I think he could have a multitude of draws, whether that's like possibly diamond draws, although I block those. So I think he could have some stuff like six, five. He could have nine, eight, 10, nine, 10, eight. He could definitely have a Jack X hand that he feels uh, very confident with, considering that I checked and the player behind me checked in the flop, so maybe we don't have as much Ace X in our range. But I, I do think that I'm doing very well against his range with what is still often the best hand and obviously the nut draw. I think that this is a spot where 
I actually do well with call. I think that you can definitely argue raise to have a, I guess, like a hand where you check back the flop and then do raise the turn sometimes. But I think with my range overall, I'm going to be doing a lot of calling in this spot. I think that when you talk about raising in the spot as well, you have to determine if you're doing it for value or as a bluff. I don't really think I get worse hands to call here all that often. I think that he will fold uh, most of his jack X. So I do think it's a spot, and excuse that noise, guys. It's my cat, and I'm going to squirt him real quick. So excuse that, but I don't have time to edit this out. So uh, I do think the call works well here. It keeps him wide. I don't think I really get worse to call often enough. So and, and often it may actually induce this aggro uh, player behind me to make some kind of move that wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. So I do like call in this spot. And the player behind me folds, which I was expecting. Like I said, on the flop, I think he caps himself a little bit. I think once there's action from this player and myself, he's uh, often not going to have a lot of combos that can continue. Turns a nine of spades, and the unbalanced player checks to me. It's a spot where I think players get kind of fearful of value betting and they think that their hands may be a little too weak to value bet. But what you have to determine in this spot is that when I block diamonds pretty hard, it's going to make it a little more likely that he has some kind of made hand. Yeah, 6-5 missed, but he could certainly have a lot of jack X. He could have 10-9, 9-8. I think that there are hands that this opponent will call with that are worse now. If we talk about sizing, I don't think I do get those hands to call necessarily for like pot, although I can represent some bluffs. But I do think a smaller bet works pretty well here. It, it makes it so that my future bluffs are a little bit cheaper. And I, I think with this actual hand, I would like to bet smaller, really targeting hands like Jack X and possibly a hand like 10 9 or 9 8. So I do go ahead and bet 105, which I think is a reasonable number to get a Jack to call or 9X to call, possibly maybe even a hand like pocket tens. And he does go ahead and call, and he ended up actually having, which is kind of a gross turn for him, uh, king jack of diamonds. So it makes sense for him to uh, play his hand the way that he did. I think with his actual hand, you could consider uh, check calling or check raising the turn even. Uh, but I, I think a lead is certainly arguable. But yeah, it's, it's hard to blame him for certainly calling the spot. Now, the fact that he blocks diamonds also doesn't really help him all that much, but the thing is is that most opponents in my spot are not checking back ace-x hands, like ace-x plus hands all that often, especially in a live 2-5 pool. Like, almost no opponents or players really do it often enough, so I do think that there's merit, uh, you know, as far as him betting the turn and then going for, like, a bluff catching scenario on the river, so I, I think his hands actually played decently well, but yeah, I think it's a pretty cool hand and interesting or interesting uh, hand and, and spot to talk about on pretty much every street. So nice little hand, uh, got some thin value on the river, and we'll move on to the PLO hand now for you PLO lovers or players that are looking to improve at PLO. This is going to be a six max fifty cent one dollar game or PLO one hundred essentially. Gets folded to me in the cutoff. I have ace jack ten eight double suit, a very very nice hand uh, in the cutoff. I decide to pot it. The player on the button decides a 3-bet, and both the blinds fold. Interesting spot where I see players way too often just flatting uh, the 3-bet. Your hand is certainly good enough to flat and, and play even out of position, but the thing is, is that with this dynamic, players that are at least somewhat competent in, in PLO, they understand that in any form of poker, when I'm going to be in the cutoff here, I should be a little bit wider, and so he is going to be able to try to isolate or take down the pot with a 3-bet a little wider than usual. This player, in particular, was also quite loose at the table. He was putting in a lot of 3-bets, so I think this is actually a great spot to go ahead and 4-bet, and I think the reason that I bring this hand up is, is that it's not super interesting, but I think players are generally only 4-betting hands like aces, and then hands like possibly ace-king-king or double-suited kings, or like well- connected kings, like good kings, I should say. So I think that players don't consider taking a hand like this ace high rundown and go ahead and, and four betting it. I think against his actual range, if we go in here, I'm actually going to take away these combos because I don't want to, we're not to that point in the hand yet, but I will go ahead and try to run it here. If it will go ahead and work for me. 
And yeah, you can see that, uh, you know, against a three betting range, it's basically, you know, the top 15% of his hands. I'm actually ahead of that range pretty much. So yeah, it's a flip, but uh, I, I do think the point is that I'm doing well enough to where when you're out of position and the button's going to be three betting you a lot, you want to play tough from the cutoff. And I think that you'll, you guys will do a lot better by starting to four bet much more often and, instead of just three betting and letting him always take control of the hand and, and you know, going to the flop and beyond. So I do go ahead and four bet, and I like this type of hand to do it with. The ace blocks a lot of his ace-ace combos that he would go ahead and five bet with. I think most opponents in these lower stakes pools are not going to be five betting without ace-ace most of the time. So I do like this uh, this type of hand. These double suited ace high rundowns are very good hands to do it with. You have good board coverage across most high to middling boards. So and, and with the flush draws, it really helps you on a lot of runouts as far as like backdoor draws go, and as far as uh, being or being able to have enough stack off equity on the flop. And you guys will see that when I actually get to the flop here. So he does go ahead and call me, and I pretty much now give him a range of pretty much everything that he 3-bet with for the most part, excluding ace-ace, and then I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he might get an ace-king-king just because he blocks ace-ace himself. So I, that uh, could be arguable, but I think it's reasonable, and it, it won't really affect his hand all that much. So he ends up calling, and we see a flop of 9-6-3. Obviously, I don't really hit this flop directly all that hard. However... I do have the gutter, and I do have two backdoor flush draws with, uh, you know, an SPR of low than one, or lower than one, I should say. And I need only about 31% uh, equity to stack off here to break even against his range as we stand right now. Uh, based on how we played the hand preflop, I have well more than enough. So I, I think that you could argue betting small as one of the options, but I, I think in this scenario where the board is kind of draw heavy. I think I just do better by just getting it in now. And you have to think about how you would play your whole range in the spot. I think aces and kings, I would like to just get in and not have to play uh, turn cards necessarily, especially aces and kings that don't really have any kind of uh, backup plan or like, you know, backdoor flush draws or any kind of backdoor draw. So I do think that shoving is probably just the best move here. I go ahead and do that. He calls. And he actually ended up having... So I did not put in the rest of the hand, but I actually ended up uh, going runner-runner with 10-10 to give me trips. His actual hand was, I believe, he had queen, queen, yeah, queen, queen, 7-5 I have written down. That is not a very good hand to get involved with in a 3-bet pot let alone a 4-bet pot. To be totally honest, I don't even think he should be flatting my raise, uh, my open on, on the button with this hand. He, more often than not, is just going to be flopping his overpair with the queens. He, by flatting, would allow the small blind and big blind to take some kind of action if this hand goes multi-way. Yes, he does have his queens, but his spades are often uh, somewhat vulnerable, and his hand just doesn't really, the, the four cards don't really work together that well. He, he more often than not is just going to be stuck with just queens. It's going to leave him in a tough spot. When he three bets with this hand, it, it's just going to be uh, not a good situation for him against a tough player who, even if I just flat with a lot of my range in, uh, you know, in that spot preflop, there's going to be a lot of boards that are going to be really hard for him to continue on. So... I do think that he puts himself in a really hard spot with a hand that he probably should just be folding to my open uh, preflop. But, you know, as played on the flop, he has to commit, and I end up uh, running out a, a pretty lucky hand. So, yeah, pretty interesting spot. I just mainly wanted to show you guys that, you know, what kind of hands you want to think about as far as four betting and why you should be four betting with this dynamic more often than uh, calling, especially against a player on the button who's going to be three betting most of the time. And then pretty much if you flop really anything at all, you're going to have often enough equity to just get it in. So interesting spot. I uh, hope you guys found some value in both the no limit and the PLO hands. If you have any questions or comments about either hand or the lines that I took, go ahead and let me know. Until next time, this is Nick from Arch City Poker. Take care.